Hello, welcome back. Um, this tutorial is about alkylating agents, uh, which is used as an anti-cancer drug. I'm going to be talking about three alkylating agents. Number one is cyclophosphamide. Number two is nitrosuria. And number three is busulfan. Okay, let's talk about cyclophosphamide first, starting with the mechanism of action. The mechanism of action of cyclophosphamide is that it cross links DNA at guanine N7. It cross links DNA at guanine N7 and it does it coval covalently okay so mechanism A would be cross links DNA covalently at guanine N7 Okay, so let's quickly compare what is the mechanism of action of nitrosurias. Okay, nitrosurias. Um, nitrosurias are the carmustins, the mustins, the carmustin, low mustin, um, semustin, and streptozoosin. Those are uh, nitrosurias, and these are bioactivated. Okay, they require to require bioactivation. They require bioactivation. And um, they can cross blood brain barrier. What about busulfan? What is the mechanism of action of busulfan? It does what alkylating agents do. Alkylates DNA. Okay, I missed out a little bit in cyclophosphamide in terms of mechanism. There is one more thing it does, and I missed it out on purpose. Uh, we know that nitrosurias require bioactivation. This one also requires bioactivation, and this one requires bioactivation by liver. Okay, this one requires bioactivation by liver. Now what are the clinical use of each one of his each one of these drugs? Let's talk about the clinical use of cyclophosphamide. The clinical use of cyclophosphamide is what kind of lymphoma? Is it Hodgkin's or non-Hodgkin's? It's actually non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Okay, so we know what are some of the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. We learned about those. They're follicular lymphoma, they are um, large cell lymphoma, mantle cell lymphoma, Burkitt's lymphoma, uh, they are nodular lymphoma. So those are all non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Okay, and other than non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, it's also used in breast cancers and ovarian ovarian cancers plus it's also used as a immunosuppressant and it's used as immunosuppressant um, just like cyclosporin um, moving on to nitrosuria, the 
clinical use of nitrosuria or carmustine or low mustine or streptozoxin, these ones are used for brain tumors. And it makes sense because it can cross blood brain barrier. So we want a drug which will work in the brain area, which can enter the blood brain, which can penetrate through the blood brain region. And the most dangerous of all brain brain tumors is glioblastoma multiforme. So that is also treated with natrosurias. In terms of toxicity, since it can, um, okay, so we're going to talk about toxicity at the end. What about the clinical use of busulfan? For busulfan, the clinical use is CML. Okay. And it's also used in hematopoietic cells. Okay. It's also used in hematopoietic cell. when there is transplantation. Okay. All right, so let's quickly talk about all the clinical use and the mechanism of action. So for cyclophosphamide, the clinical use is, uh, the mechanism of action is it intercalates DNA or it cross-links DNA at guanine and seven um, and it does it covalently and it requires bioactivation by the liver. Uh, for the clinical use it's used for um, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma okay, used for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and also breast and ovary. For mechanism of action it also is, needs bioactivation by the liver. For natrosurious um, this one is also bioactivated, but it's not specific whether it's by liver or not, but it's also bioactivated, and it can cross plus blood brain barrier. As a result, we use it for all kinds of brain tumors. For busulfan, this alkylates DNA, very non-specific in terms of um, mechanism of action. In clinical use, it's used for CML, okay? and it's also used for hematopoietic cell transplant. Alright, so let's talk about toxicities of cyclophosphamide. Okay, it's the main toxicity that we often hear about from cyclophosphamide is that it causes hemorrhagic cystitis. Um, hemorrhagic cystitis, but it can be prevented by another drug called mesna. There is another toxicity for this uh, drug, and that is myelosuppression. Okay. Those are the toxicities for cyclo for uh, cyclophosphamide. Okay, so let's do the entire drug. Cyclophosphamide, what is the mechanism of action? It covalently, um, it covalently, um, sorry, it covalently uh, cross-links DNA at the guanine N7 um, junction or site. It requires bioactivation by liver. It's used for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. It's also used for uh, breast and ovarian cancers. It's used for immunosuppression. Um, toxicities include, include hemorrhagic cystitis and can be prevented with mesna. It also causes myelosuppression. In terms of nitrosuria, um, the toxicities would include, since, since it can enter um, the, the brain or it can cross blood brain barrier, it can cause all kind of um, CNS um, toxicity, for example, seizures. It can cause seizures. Um, it can cause ataxia. It can cause dizziness. 
Okay. So what is nitrous urea? It requires bioactivation and can cross blood-brain barrier. It's used for brain tumors, for example, glioblastoma, and it can cause all kinds of brain toxicities or CNS toxicities like seizures, ataxia, and dizziness. And what about busulfan? What about the toxicity of busulfan? This one causes um, pulmonary fibrosis. Okay, it can cause pulmonary fibrosis. It can also cause hyperpigmentation. It can also cause hyperpigmentation. Okay, so what is the clinical, uh, what is the whole picture of busulfan? It alkylates DNA, it's used for CML and hematopoietic cells when there is a transplantation and its uh, toxicities include pulmonary fibrosis and hyperpigmentation. What is uh, a drug, what is another drug that causes pulmonary fibrosis? Bleomycin. They both start with B, so that's one way of remembering. And what is another drug that causes cardiotoxicity? That would be doxorubicin. Okay, that's, uh, that's about it all, and I'll see you guys again on my next video. Bye for now.